Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Marcus Kim. Uh, I'm from Daum in Korea. Uh, Daum is the leading Korean portal uh, with 2 billion daily inflation. I worked on several projects at Daum, um, Adam uh, and DDN. Uh, Adam is the largest mobile ad network in Korea. Uh, DDN is Daum display network or like GDN. And currently, I am a product director of Value Potion. Value Potion is a game analytics and uh, marketing product. Uh, Value Potion provides not only the, uh, the optimal in a marketing tools, but also uh, a solution for maximizing revenue besides in a purchases uh, based on court analysis. With a simple SDK integration, we help you monetize your full user base in a smart way. Value Potion launched in October of last year and has been a cross beta program for six months. Uh, if you have any question on Value Potion, uh, please feel free to email me uh, and I will reply to you with the detailed product information. I hope to gain lots of interest about our product from you. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, let's go over today's agenda for this, my presentation. Uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to explain what the definition of LTV is for mobile games. Um, based on this, uh, I will explain how to maximize LTV in, in the your life cycle phase. Um, what is the lifetime value on mobile games? Uh, lifetime value defines the average value of users uh, in the user life cycle uh, for mobile games. For free-to-play games, it defines how, how long they play games known as uh, retention. And how much money they spend depends as revenue. Of course, um, there are uh, games uh, use a social graph. It has great effect on game value for users who have high social value. However, in today's presentation, uh, I'd like to explain the definition of LTV uh, in terms of revenue. Uh, revenue is the most important factor. Uh, before introducing how to maximize lifetime value, we need to look at the character of free-to-play games uh, in the mobile industry uh, in order to uh, exam examine the character of free-to-play games. Uh, we surveyed the, uh, some metrics using game action data for uh, last two months uh, from value portion. Uh, this chart uh, shows uh, the ratio of users by the number of purchases. The x axis is the number of payments, uh, and the y axis is the rate of total payers. As you can see, uh, around 46% of total payment users are one-time payers. And as the number of purchases increased, uh, the percentage of users uh, dramatically decreased. Moreover, uh, over 80% of total users paid less than four times. Uh, this chart shows uh, how long it will take people they make uh, their first purchase uh, after starting game. The X axis shows the daily unit of time of the first, first purchase. The Y axis shows the daily uh, of time of first purchase 
the y axis shows the percentage of failures out of total failures in a certain period. Uh, according to this chart, you can see that about 3-4% of total failures made the first, first purchase in 24 hours. About 70% of total payers made the first purchase within seven days after starting the game. It means um, that most of payers uh, made the first purchase in seven days after starting the game. Um, this chart shows the percentage of 60 days uh, revenue by payers. We divided this uh, into six range of percentage. We can see that the top 10% of the payer makes up to 60% uh, of revenue. Uh, in summary, only 1.3% uh, of active users made the purchases during the two months. Most games don't show much, dip much difference from this figure in better portion. And the top 10% of payers made up 60% of the total revenue. And this means that 0.13% uh, of total users made up 60% of the total revenue. Uh, according to this result, you can see how high spenders have a great effect on revenue and how imp important uh, they are to game success. Uh, also, 46% of the total users made a single purchase within two months. And 34% of the total payers purchased the uh, items in 24 hours after starting the game. And over 70% users made a purchase, a first purchase in sev seven days. Uh, on the other hand, uh, 44% of the total users never came back after playing the game once. Uh, we found out that they were acquired uh, by incentivized, incentivized ad campaigns as they are, uh, uh, they are very small numbers. Yeah. As, you, as you know, uh, it is very difficult to increase conversion from non fair to fairs. In this in these situations, I think increasing uh, purchases from fair is more effective approach uh, to maximize LTV. Of course, it does not mean that uh, you don't need to put effort for non payers to make purchases. With this effort in maximizing LTV for better result, you need to have higher priority of securing payers to increase purchases than getting purchases from non-payers. Um, let's talk about the correlation between user life cycle and LTV. Uh, in order to maximize LTV, uh, you need to understand uh, user behavior uh, first. This chart shows the correlation of LTV by dividing the pace of user life cycle. I think you may see these kinds of charts in many articles uh, online. This shows how important LTV is for game success. Um, user lifestyle can be divided into five phases. Um, acquisition, retention, engagement, cross promotion, and monetization with ads. For your reference, uh, recently uh, there are many games 
uh, which generate revenue not only in the in-app purchase, but also uh, advertise using user session. So I have added the monetization with this phase uh, this time. Uh, let me explain what, strategy, what strategies you need to use for each phase to maximize LTV. Uh, uh, so many game developers are really focused on how to acquire new users and allocate marketing, marketing budget in the acquisition phase. Uh, but even if there are many marketing channels, some of them still don't provide accurate installs and reliable data uh, by their reporting system. Also, uh, it is very difficult to evaluate and optimize the campaigns uh, due to the uh, CPI ad system. And to start the ad networks, you need to integrate many SDK of each network into your games, and some users uh, are duplicate. Uh, as they don't have the same metrics, and also there are uh, many cherry pickers. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, you need to make your own tracking metrics to analyze and optimize uh, campaign effectiveness uh, so that you can acquire new users efficiently and sustain users' retention. Um, it, this, uh, this chart, sure. Um, uh, um, as you can see uh, uh, on this page, uh, low CPI does not stand for good uh, publisher. But high CPI media can be the effective marketing channel uh, to maximize LTV. LTV uh, after testing. Uh, engagement and re-engagement phase. Uh, engagement is the most important, important stage to maximize LTV in this phase. Uh, in this phase, keep segmenting users and understand their behaviors. And then learn in-app marketing uh, based on this insight. This image is a value portion engagement concept model. Uh, for in a marketing, uh, first, uh, collect user actions to find out user behaviors, uh, such as uh, country, device, OS, uh, friends, game level, uh, purchase information, uh, station start and end, uh, item uses, uh, etc. In order to understand user behaviors in your game, you need to collect as many user actions as possible. Second, create a code of various subjects using uh, user actions collected. It would be great uh, it, if you can create as many codes as possible, uh, such as uh, non-payers, uh, one-time payers, over one-time payers, um, top 10% revenue payers, uh, non-active users for three days, for seven days, uh, etc. Uh, in terms of daily visits and high retention users, also it is important to create various code groups suited for game characters. It is especially mandatory to create quotes uh, based on payers to maximize revenue. Um, as mentioned earlier, it is easier to increase spending uh, from payers than non-payers. Especially, uh, you need to create a quote of high spenders and keep monitoring how they engage. 
as you can see in the value portion survey, uh, around uh, 0.13 of total users make up 60% of the total revenue. They are the most valuable users in your game. When uh, you run the optimal marketing campaigns uh, based on their behavior analytics, it will have great results in the economically success of our games. Create a quote and analyze the key metrics first. After getting this insight, you can learn in a marketing accordingly. Uh, there are various in marketing tools. And I'd like to show you the four most uh, uh, typical uh, famous in a marketing here. They are push notification announced in a purchase and reward. Using these tools, uh, you can reach each code of their characters at the right time and run the uh, right campaigns. Uh, based on the campaign result, uh, recreate the target group uh, by code and keep increasing user engagement. Recently, there are many projects to offer these kinds of analysis and marketing tool. Uh, uh, most of uh, these tools, uh, small user-based games can be applied to this uh, product, product uh, free to uh, chat. You can compare with several product, products uh, and choose ones that fit your games. Um, uh, cost promotion, yeah, remember, um, even 90-80% of your players might not spend any money on your game. But your player could have an important role in maximizing your LTV. Uh, if uh, re-engagement does not convert player into payers or lead them to increase, uh, to increase uh, additional revenue. It is time to move on the next phase in LTV. Cross promotion offers a good tool to lower your CPA in order to acquire new users uh, efficiently. Uh, as you know, uh, ranking and ratings are really important uh, in App Store. Uh, previous, uh, they, are, they were managed, managed by the player rewards to boost up App Store ranking. However, uh, recently most app stores uh, also consider uh, reviews and ratings by users for ranking. So you can use the user's reviews and ratings to rate uh, your game in the app store. Uh, at the last phase, uh, uh, at the last phase is uh, uh, monetizing with S. Uh, it is so difficult to convert non-payers into payers. Um, I recommend that uh, you make more money through advertisement revenue using non-paying non -paying users. Uh, apart from cherry pickers, uh, over uh, 50% of your active users only play game, uh, never make purchase revenue. These users are valuable users too for game success, but game developers have to spend operation costs to them. Um, make more money, uh, not only in a purchase revenue using uh, payers, uh, but also uh, uh, advertise revenue using non-payers. Um, you may not want to integrate every single ad network SDK into your game, 
uh, you can find a single SDK uh, which provides several ad networks uh, interacted into your game. Mm. Um, uh, I hope my lecture was uh, helpful in your, uh, for your game.